Hello and welcome! Today we are in the new tier 7 Canadian battleship, the Yukon. She has the beautiful maple leaf camouflage, which sadly I think isn't the default camo. I think this is something extra. She will be available for 9800 doubloons and she was given to me by Wargaming. We're playing a match on the map Neighbors and it's a tier 6 to 8 battle. So, what is the Yukon? The Yukon is a battleship with super heal. That's probably the first thing you'll notice. Just check this out. I can heal almost 32,000 HP in a single heal. That's more than half my HP, provided of course that I take that as damage that's actually healable. By the way, the number itself comes from a mod from Aslane's mod pack. I don't remember which one it is though. So, a battleship with super heal at tier 7. Hmm, a, a destroyer. But the Yukon does have a massive downside, which is her main battery range. She only has 15.7 kilometer range. This is not that big of a deal when you're in a tier 5 to 7 battle. It can be against tier 7 ships, but usually isn't. But when you end up in tier 9 battles, this can be catastrophic because basically everything outranges you at tier 9. Don't forget about battleships, most cruisers will outrange you at that point. And that's kind of a problem. Because the deck armor of the ship is 26mm absolutely everywhere at the top. Which means that HE spam while your super heals are pretty good, it can still add up quite quickly. The guns on the ship are pretty much average, mediocre, something along those lines. They're 381mm caliber, so you can overmatch 25 but not 27. The penetration is between New Mexico and Gneisenau. But the accuracy is also, I think, about the same as American battleships normally get. So, again, mediocre. Nothing too special. Oh, is that an Irian sailing broadside on? Not turning at all. Oh, ho, ho. she's just waiting to be dev-struck here, right? <laughs> oh, okay. That was extremely disappointing. 7k damage only, mostly over pens, but that was due to me not leading enough with the guns. So again, again, to conclude, the guns are average, nothing too special. The Yukon does have some other advantages though, which is the concealment. 11.5 km concealment in a battleship is extremely good, especially one that isn't tier 8 that doesn't have the uh, concealment upgrade. So this battleship is fairly stealthy. And on top of that, she's also maneuverable. She has a 790 meter turning circle, with a 9.7 second rudder shift. Just as a point of comparison, basically think of a slightly more sluggish Des Moines, or to compare it to the Irian that we just uh, shot at, she has a 10.3 second rudder shift with a 760 meter turning circle. So we're basically the same in terms of maneuverability. And that thing is a cruiser, okay? A real cruiser. The Irian also only gets something like 800 meters on concealment over the Yukon and that's because the Irian gets access to the tier 8 concealment upgrade which obviously the Yukon does not. If the Irian doesn't take it the Yukon actually literally outspots her which is pretty amazing for a battleship. Okay looking at the match though that Irian is just I don't know what she's doing but I don't seem to be capable of punishing her for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, she's just been sailing broadside on the entire time. There's nothing I can do? What the hell? Also, I've been taking a lot of damage. I have truly been tanking a lot here, but looking at the minimap, it makes a lot of sense. The only ships over here are me and that North Carolina. I really hoped that we had slightly more support here, but apparently not. So this will have to be a fighting retreat. Otherwise, we will just simply sink. We'll, we will have to wait until the uh, guys at the ACAP, the uh, 
Bayan and the Andrea Doria and the Queen Elizabeth decide to one day turn around and actually stand their ground to fight the enemy. But so far though, we'll just have to retreat until they make their decision. Come on. Seriously? Why can I not punish this Irian? I don't understand. Ah, I really probably should have just been firing on battleships instead. Would have probably uh, done more for the team. Oh wow, our Z-31 got uh, detonated. Fine, Queen Elizabeth it is. She's a way easier target to hit. I think she just fired HE at me. Well, let's speed up, maybe we can... Wait, did she fire HE at me? Well, yeah, I guess she did. They weren't that close to my ship, though. Oh, the North Carolina finally finished the Arian off. Somebody finally did it. Seriously, though, what are they doing at the ACAP? Are they just chasing one kid? <laughs> With, like, half the team? Don't we have an aircraft carrier for that? Well, apparently not. But... The defense of the B-Cap is the name of the game. So far it's a 9 versus 9, so neither side seems to have a massive advantage anyway. It's not that bad. Yet. There, Gneisen now seems to be pushing, which seems to be a bit of a silly decision. Because uh, right now their team is actually in a pretty good spot. Because their battleships are so far enough that our most of our ships can't engage them. Which could possibly give the, them an advantage. But if they send their ships into our team one by one, like that Nizano is doing right now, well, it kind of negates the advantage that their positioning gets them. Because our Andrea Dorias and Bayans and whatnot can actually just engage the Gneisenau. The angle isn't the greatest, but it's still something. Also, I think our North Carolina is gonna go down soon. Maybe I should slow down a little so I end up tanking in her stead. Then again, the North Carolina has 17k HP, I only had 24k HP, so I'm not necessarily a better ship to tank right now. Oh, actually, NC even healed a little bit to 20k, so yeah, perhaps uh, she can tank for a little bit longer. I'd really like to turn around, but the main problem is that we can't do that. You see that Akatsuki there on the minimap at the top right? That ship is probably... yeah, <laughs> we can see a literal smoke screen. That Takatsuki has been chasing us, which is why it'll, it's impossible to turn around. If the Akatsuki weren't there, I would have probably wanted to go closer to the southern island and then turn around to push into the enemy, because that would then allow me to get the broadsides of them. And perhaps give us some advantages. Taking a bit of a risk sailing broadside onto the enemy, but I think they're more focused on the North Carolina because, well, they've been shooting her for a while and she has already used her heal. So I was hoping I could bait some shots, but doesn't seem very likely, at least nothing too much. That Nizano was taken out, and actually, now our team has an advantage. Caption wise, obviously, the enemy team is in the lead, but. We have an extra ship, and the enemies are clearly pushing into us. I'm trying to save my heal for when I take more damage. I mean, I can heal right now for 6600 HP, but the potential of my heal is 32,000. I would be using only 20% of that heal if I used it right now. So I'm gonna try to save it for slightly later. Queen Elizabeth is a good target because she is fairly soft as far as battleships are concerned. If I lend enough shells, we should be able to take her out. Soon I'm gonna start turning around. I don't want to go behind the island where the Ryujo is. Because that'll just mean I can't fight for like a minute or two. And I think it'll be easier to just do erratic maneuver so that uh, Akatsuki can't land torps properly. Okay, we got the Queen Elizabeth. We an enemy Time to start turning around now and engage, I suppose, the Bayan. Or maybe the Kansaw over there. Nah, she's out of range, obviously. 
So it'll have to be the Bayan. Or Akatsuki, I suppose. Although the destroyer is kind of far. Let's hope for the best, though. But yeah, a really maneuverable battleship is quite something. It allows you to perhaps not dodge, but it allows you to minimize the damage that other battleships do to you because they just don't expect that your bow suddenly moves this quickly or that you'll turn around this quickly. I do wish the ship were slightly faster, but I think it'll it would get to it, it might end up being too much basically. But maybe at a higher tier. You know, that's something to consider. Okay. I think Bayan's next. Because she was turning, and perhaps she will show me some side now. The Talon is actually in a very good spot right now. Because she will end up creating a bit of crossfire with me. Right? Especially the closer I get to the enemy. And if the enemy angles against me, the Talon gets their broadsides. Which is pretty much perfect. Wow, that's that's like 14 or 15k damage right there. A third of the Bayan's HP. That's a stock Bayan though, I think. But one more salvo like that and Bayan's almost gone. I am still doing erratic maneuvers because of the Akatsuki in front of me. Like, I try to change my... I try to stay on course for a while and then change it. That way, if she launched harps, I'm likely to avoid them. Yep, hey, see? Torpedoes missed me entirely. And that's because I keep doing the turns. Although, wait, was that only two sets? Does Akatsuki have three sets? I don't remember right now. Anyway, Bayan went down, so Kansaw is next. Oh, hello, Akatsuki. It's really helpful to know where the destroyer is. This allows you to plan these erratic mo movements more. I'm gonna sail basically in this kind of a diagonal pattern for a while, and then I'm gonna start turning in. Unless the Kansas fires at me, obviously. I'm gonna fire the rear turrets and then start turning a little bit. I mean, all it takes is a little bit of turning to throw torpedoes off guard. Because they take a while to arrive, and <laughs> yeah. Torpedoes, and we've already avoided them. Yep, that's how it goes. And you don't need to be super maneuverable to do this. You just need to kind of get the timing right. Oh, hello Akatsuki. Fancy seeing you in front of the island. Sadly though, my guns were still mostly reloading. I suppose I might as well use my heal. The last two ships left are the Skansas and the uh, Akatsuki, so... Chances are I'm not gonna be using all that much after that anyway. And maybe I do take an errant torpedo or a massive salvo, so might be better to just have the HP left. Let's turn in. I mean, turning in here has two purposes, right? One, it makes Kansas much less likely to deal massive damage to me. And number two, again, if Akatsuki fire torpedoes, this probably minimizes them. Oh, Akatsuki sailed out of the smoke? Okay, that was a mistake. And goodbye, and that ended the game. What a pleasant game. So, overall, I think the Yukon is alright. She, she feels pretty good. But at times, the lack of range can feel incredibly bad. Especially when you get up tiered. But, Confederate, uh, Dreadnought, High Caliber, First Blood... This is how many pens I got. Half of them are actually penetrations of the hits. 2270 base XP, pretty good result. And this North Carolina definitely deserves that compliment. I mean, think about it. That's the guy that was, uh, you know, doing the uh, fighting retreat with me. And he's still alive. So he tanked a massive amount there. 2.2 million potential. I guess I did my own tanking a little bit. But honestly, Yukon feels all right. 
she feels like a decent battleship. And actually quite fun to play because of her maneuverability. I don't think she is the most fun or the best tier 7 battleship. I think Gnaiza now is better in both. I would certainly like Gnaiza no more. For fun and just for power I think. But that's mostly because of the torpedoes. Captain skill build is what you would expect. Uh, emergency repair specialist, grease the gears, adrenaline rush, emergency repair expert, concealment expert. And that's kind of all you really need because you have super heals, right? So, But if you have extra points then basics of survivability and fire prevention. But the last seven points really aren't all that necessary because again you have super heals. I use propulsion mod, aiming systems, damage control and main arms modification 1. Again, they shouldn't be surprising at all. Overall, it's a fun ship and I think she's a decent addition to the game. Just seems pretty cool to me. And I mean, look at this camo. Damn. It's too bad that this isn't the standard camo. I'm pretty sure this isn't the standard camo. Which is a bit unfortunate. Let's take a look at the armor, I suppose. Also, again, to emphasize 11.5 kilometer concealment and 790 meter turning circle with 9.7 second rudder shift. That is truly the cruiser level. But 26 millimeter bow, and unfortunately, the entire deck is also 26 millimeters. That's pretty susceptible to HE spam. Uh, the casemate and the main belt are 381 millimeters. But you don't really need to worry about being citadel too much because the citadel sits basically on the waterline, kind of like the American battleships. So it's it's unlikely to be devstruck, to be honest, unless it's like torpedoes. But you're gonna eat quite a lot of penetrating hits, especially if you fight something like a Musashi, which absolutely can happen because you're a tier 7 ship. In fact, I fought a Musashi and while she is unlikely to sit at you, you probably won't sit at her either because of your lack of penetration. I mean, less than Gnaizeno after all. And Musashi's main belt is pretty thick. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.